Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Module 10, Lesson 3, Multiplying Polynomials. After this lesson, you need to be able to multiply binomials by using the distributive property and the FOIL method. Let's learn multiplying polynomials. In the last lesson, we learned about using the distributive property to multiply monomials with polynomials. In this lesson, we are going to multiply binomials, so two terms, with polynomials of varying lengths, usually more binomials, but it could also be trinomials or longer polynomials. Binomials can be multiplied in a few different ways. First, there is the vertical method. Now, this particular method looks exactly like you probably learned multiplication in elementary school. You're gonna line up the two things. Notice again here, I have it lined up kind of like like terms. If I was missing a term, I would wanna put in a placeholder to show that that was missing. Kind of like if I had the number 102, I would have to put the zero in the tens place. But here's how this works. I'm gonna multiply just like it would be if it numbers. So six times two, is 12 and it was a negative, so it stays negative. Six times X is six X. Then I shift one place over just like in regular multiplication and now I do it again. X times negative two is negative two X. X times X, X squared. Now I'm going to add straight down. They should be lined up if we had it in standard form to begin with. So negative 12 plus nothing is negative 12. Six X plus negative two X is four X and nothing plus X squared is X squared. So multiplying the binomial, we end up with this. Our other method we can use is a horizontal method, and that involves taking each term in the first and multiplying it to everything in the second. Now, this method, we're going to learn another strategy to help us out as it can be a little bit harder to keep track of, but it is not impossible. So our key concept here is the FOIL method. And this is a method that's gonna help us keep track of when we're distributing what we need to multiply by and what we've already done. So FOIL is an acronym that stands for first, outer, inner, and last. And that's telling you what to multiply by. So if you have two binomials and we are following FOIL, we're going to take the first two terms, x and x, and multiply them together. And we would get x to the second power. Then we're going to do the outside terms. So x and 6 would give us 6x. i for the inner terms, negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And then our last terms, the l, negative 2 times 6, see that right there, is negative 12. With this method, most likely you're still gonna have to combine the two terms from your O and your I, your inner and your outer, into one final simplified expression. And then as we learned in lesson one, any expression with one variable and a degree of two, so we can see that degree here, is called a quadratic expression. And you are gonna notice we're gonna end up with a lot of quadratic expressions when we're multiplying two binomials. Example one, multiply binomials by using the vertical method. So as I just showed for the vertical method, we're going to take each piece and multiply like we did in elementary school. So seven times negative one is negative seven, seven times x, seven x. x times negative one, negative one x, and x times x is x squared. Line up our like terms, fill in our placeholders, and then just combine down. So zero plus x squared is x squared, seven plus negative one is positive six, negative seven plus zero is negative seven. And that is our final answer. Example three, multiply binomials by using the FOIL method. So find the product of 2a minus 12 and 5a plus 3 by using the FOIL method. So here we have our picture to help us show where each thing is. For our f, we have 2a times 5a, our first terms. Then our outer terms, 2a and 3. Our inner terms are negative 12 and 5a. And our last terms are negative 12 and 3. Now multiplying stuff together, 5 times 2 is 10. a times a is a squared. 2 times 3 is 6 with the a. Negative 12 and 5 is negative 60 with the A, and negative 12 times 3 is negative 36. Again, we still have to combine our outer and inner terms from the middle, so positive 6 minus 60 is negative 54A. So our final expression is 10A squared minus 54A minus 36. And again, we have another quadratic expression. Check your understanding. Find the product of 3P minus 9 and 2P plus 6 by using the FOIL method. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, part A, if we're finding the products, we're pairing each thing together. So first, 3p and 2p. Outer, 3p and 6. Inner, negative 9 and 2p. And last, negative 9 and 6. Then, if we're multiplying all that out, together here we'd have 6p squared. Here we would have 18p. Here we would have negative 18p. And we would finally have negative 54. 
The final product then is just going to be 6p squared minus 54, since positive 18 and negative 18 would go to 0 p's. Apply example 5. Multiply binomials by using the, and then on this one, instead of the distributive property, I'm going to show you a different method called the box method or the area model. And if you're familiar with Punnett squares in science used in genetics, then this method might be fairly simple for you. So the box method can be used to find the product, and this is especially helpful if we have longer polynomials, but it also works on monomials and binomial times binomial. How this works, you're going to take and figure out how many boxes you need to make. So the first one's a binomial, so I need two boxes. The second one is a trinomial, so I need three boxes. And I'm going to make a grid that is two by three. If it was like a trinomial times, say, a four-term polynomial, then I would do three by four. Then once I know how many boxes, I'm going to split these so I know where to write them. So x and positive three would go on one side, and then x squared, negative x, and negative nine would be split apart to the boxes on the other side. Then, similar to Punnett squares, I'm going to take each part and combine them together to fill in the box. So x times x to the second power would be x to the third power. x times negative x would be negative, and then x and x would make x squared. And then negative nine times x would be negative nine x. Then for the bottom row, I would have positive 3x squared, minus 3x, and minus 27. Then I'm going to take all of those and just rewrite them out. Notice I am putting the ones that are alike next to each other, so that way I can combine them quickly. So when I do that, I would end up with x to the third power plus 2x squared minus 12x minus 27. Also, one thing I want to point out, the ones that have like terms here are diagonal of each other. So usually they're directly diagonal, but if you are missing some terms and you need like a placeholder of a zero, they might actually be a little farther apart, but they will still be the same kind of diagonal of each other. But be careful that you're combining terms that are alike. They have to have the same variable and same exponent. Even if we're multiplying longer polynomials, here we have a trinomial times a trinomial, the box method might actually be your best bet. If you were trying to FOIL this, what do you do about the middle terms? You still have to do the middle times everything. This can get really confusing to keep track of what you've already done. So here I would need a three by three, since there's three terms in each, place my values on the side, and I can go through and multiply each box together. So I'd have 12t to the fourth, negative 12t to the third, and positive 42t squared. Second row, negative 20t third, positive 20t squared, and negative 70t. Last row, positive 36t squared, negative 36t, and plus 126. And just like I said in the last example, notice like terms are diagonals. So if we combine them all together, we have 12t to the fourths, negative 32t to the thirds, 98t to the second powers, negative 106t's, and plus 126. Check your understanding. Find the product of these two problems. You may use any of the methods that we've learned here. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So for A, you should have got A. And for problem B, you should have picked C. For both of these, just based on the fact that I have a trinomial in each, this one has two of them, I would use the box method. So setting up this first one, we would have two tall by three wide, m minus three, m squared, m, so plus m minus five. Going through, I have m to the third power, which all of those have. The end, I would have plus 15. Notice which two I did first, because I can check. I see minus 15 there, can't be d. Now I'm going to go through m plus m is m squared, and I'm going to do the diagonal one, so minus 3m squared. Negative 3 and 1 is negative 2, so which one has negative 2? a or c, not b. Then finally, my other ones, I have negative 3m and negative 5m. Together, those would make negative 8m, so a. For b here, I need a 3 by 3 box. I have 6v squared, 4v, and minus 3, and then I have 1v squared, minus v, plus 6. So I'm going to do the same process as I did before. 6 times v to the fourth would go there. All of those have it. It doesn't help. Negative 3 times positive 6 is negative 18. Again, all of them have minus 18. That didn't help. So I'm going to try to eliminate. 4v times v squared, that would give us 4v to the third, and then 6 minus, because of the negative there, v squared, and v it would be v to the third. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Can't be it. Uh, 10. The rest have negative 2. This would be negative 3v squared, 
4 times negative 1 is negative 4 v squared, and 6 v squared times 6 is 36 v squared. Notice how I'm doing them diagonal, because those are the like terms. 36 minus 4 is 32, minus 3 is 29. Can't be beat. Finally, I need, is it 27 or 24? 4 times 6 is 24. With the v, negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3 v. So 3 v, 24 v is 27 v, not 24. Answer was C. So again, I use the box method. It's easy for me to organize and see how it's going. If you wanted to use FOIL, you would have to do the first one times all three, the second one times all three, and the last one times all three. It might get a little confusing about which ones you've done and haven't done. So do it however you need to to get the answer right, but the box method might help you stay more organized.